I'm sure you've seen all the headlines about how the Biden administration and his crack team of national security diplomats have worked with the Iranian government to free five American prisoners held there. Is that the extent of this story? Is there more to it? And what exactly are they giving away for those five American prisoners? And have they even been released? Well, let's take a deep dive for the next 10 minutes with Fred Flights. He's a senior fellow at the American First Policy Institute. And, and first, let's start with the fundamentals here. Have these prisoners actually been released? Are they going to be released? What's their status? Larry, it's great to be here. They have not been released. They have been released from an Iranian prison, but they have not been released from Iran. They are still under house arrest in Iran. The $6 billion in sanctions relief, th these were Iranian funds being held in South Korea. Uh, they, I understand, are in a Swiss bank and will be sent to a bank in Qatar. But the actual agreement has not been finalized yet, so we can't say that these five Americans have been freed. All right. And since it's still ongoing, uh, are, is there any strings attached to that money? Like when we give the Iranians their money, is there anything stopping them from using it to fund terror attacks against Israelis? Yeah, that's a great question, because the uh, Biden administration has tried to reassure the American people that Iran will not use this six billion dollars for terrorism or making weapons or attacking Israel because it's going to go through a bank in Qatar and Qatar will only give the money to the Iranians for humanitarian purposes. I mean, give me a break. Money is fungible. That just means the Iranians will spend less money on humanitarian purposes from its general budget and send that money for weapons and use this money for food. Uh, you know, this is just a joke. And I know that there's more to this deal that actually involves allowing Iran to enrich uranium, and that's mind boggling. I want to get to that in a moment. First, the fundamental uh, principle involved here, negotiating with and handing over money to this government as they've taken Americans and imprisoned them. I mean, these aren't really prisoners. They didn't really break laws. They're hostages, aren't they? And by doing this, aren't we encouraging them to take more hostages? These are hostages. But look, whenever uh, Americans unjustly in prison abroad, especially in a, in a brutal prison like Iran's Evian prisoner release, this is a cause for celebration. And we have to be happy for them and for their families. Absolutely. The problem is we've said we've set a bad precedent. This is at least the third time Democratic presidents have paid huge sums to get Americans out of jail. And you may, may remember in January 2016 when the Obama administration paid $1.7 billion in plain loads of cash in a secret deal that it hid from Congress for seven months to free five American uh, prisoners, you know, by repeatedly paying ransom to the Iranians, we're encouraging them to take hostages so they can get more ransom. And that brings us to this uranium question. Uh, this is part of the deal here that, that, I mean, since when is this part of a negotiation over the release of American prisoners or hostages that, that they add a, a condition that we allow them to enrich uranium? I would think that that would be a treaty that would be negotiated and would have to go through Senate approval. The Biden administration has been obsessed with reversing Donald Trump's withdrawal from Obama's nuclear deal, the JCPOA, have, haven't been able to do it. But it, starting in May, there have been secret talks between Iran and the U.S. with Oman operating as an intermediary to get a truly disastrous deal that would give Iran $20 billion in sanctions relief. They've just gotten six this week promised would allow Iran to enrich to 60% uranium-235, which is just a hair below weapons grade. Weapons grade is 90%. It's not hard to jump from 60 to 90%. And there also was going to be a prisoner exchange. Now, this is part of that secret agreement. But what's so outrageous about this is that to evade a 2015 law that requires nuclear deals with Iran to be reviewed by Congress, the Iran Nuclear Review Act of 2015, there's nothing written down. This is an oral set of understandings, and the Biden administration even denies there have been talks to implement this agreement. That way, there's nothing for Congress to see. There's nothing that Republicans have put in the newspaper for Americans to see, and they can basically make all these concessions to Iran, and there's no record on it. And, and no oversight, no, no hearings. No, don't they, by law? I mean, maybe I'm naive, but I can't imagine an administration being able to just unilaterally do this. We have checks and balances. 
That's right. Congressman Michael McCall, he's chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. He's been very clear that nuclear deals, whether they're written down or whether they're an oral agreement, the law requires that Congress has a chance to review them. And under this act, Congress can vote them down by a majority vote. They don't have to approve them, but they can they can put forward a vote of disapproval. And if both houses pass it, the agreement is struck down. The Biden administration doesn't want to risk a vote of disapproval. So it's going through the circuitous process of informal agreements so they can claim there is no agreement. This is absolutely mind boggling. And, and let's get to this this uh, uh, uranium question. Uh, th- at last I checked, Iran has a- access to a lot of oil and a lot of fuel if they need to keep the lights on. Uh, why would they even need to enrich uranium other than for, for weapons? That was the position of the United States until Barack Obama, when he conceded to Iran the right to enrich uranium. Iran is not just sitting on vast amounts of oil. It's also sitting on enormous amounts of of natural gas, some of which it flares off while it's drilling for oil. There's absolutely no need for Iran to develop nuclear energy. But assuming you can make an argument that they that they needed it or wanted it for some reason, there's no need for them pr- to produce their own nuclear fuel because there's nuclear nuclear fuels available for reactors on the open market fairly cheaply. To make it yourself is extremely expensive. And as Prime Minister Netanyahu has said, the only reason Iran wants to make nuclear fuel itself is to make nuclear fuel for nuclear weapons. Right, and, and for anybody out there who's a, an apologist for Iran or trying to sort of uh, have, a, have, have some sort of, you know, uh, third way kind of position on this, Fred Flights, I mean, they'll say, well, you know, why shouldn't they be like any other country? Why shouldn't they have the right to enrich uranium? Well, last I checked, they're not like every other country. They're a terrorist state. They fund terrorists and they threaten to annihilate Israel. Maybe we should have conditions on a country like that having enriched uranium. Under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Act, Iran is entitled to enrich uranium. The problem is it's cheated on its NPT and its International Atomic Energy Agency commitments. It's engaged in secret work to make nuclear weapons in many different ways. They've been, they were found out repeatedly during the Bush administration. So they have forfeited their right to dual use technology that could be used to make weapons. And, and that always was the position of the United States government until John yeah. Kerry and Barack Obama decided, well, we'll let Iran enrich uranium just a little bit in ter- so they can get this legacy agreement for Barack Obama. And don't tell me it was under the guise of clean energy because climate change is most important, right? Well, you know, frankly, our adversaries don't think about that. They don't care about green yeah. energy. They, they, you know, they're happy. If we're going to waste our diplomatic time talking about that, the Russians and the Chinese and the Iranians, they'll just say, go ahead. Uh, Fred Flight, let, let me play this out, because you know how these things happen, especially here in Washington, D.C., with a willing media. Uh, when these negotiations are done and these five Americans are freed, and you're right, it will be a great thing, a wonderful thing. They'll have the big ceremony on the South Lawn and there will be photo ops. Maybe they'll even fly Biden over there to greet them personally when they get out of Iran. Uh, no one's going to look at these details. No one's actually going to be pulling on these threads. How do we how do we actually shine a light on this? I think programs like this is a good start because there's actually democratic opposition to making deals like this with Iran. You know, the secret deal with Iran, it doesn't say anything about Iran giving weapons to Russia to attack in Ukraine. It doesn't say anything about uh, uh, attacking and harassing ships in the Strait of Hormuz. It's an outrageous agreement. And there are members of Congress, Senator Bob Menendez is an example, who's very upset what the Obama administration is doing. The problem is the Democratic Party is not going to buck Biden on this. But, yeah. uh, you know, the yeah. more noise we make, the, 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 you know, there, there's some chance we'll get Democrats to step up. Even if Democrats do step up, is there something that uh, we only have 30 seconds left, but can Congress get in the way of this? Can they get in front of it, even if they can convince enough Democrats? I mean, theoretically, they could pass a resolution barring Biden from doing this, but then Biden could veto it. It would have to be veto proof. This is going to this will be something that the next president, hopefully the next Republican president will fix starting in January 2025. And hopefully by then it it won't be too late. Thank you so much. Right. Flights. Really sobering stuff. Great to get into it with you. I appreciate you joining us. He is a senior fellow at the American First Policy Institute. There is more to come on O'Connor tonight. Keep it here. You are watching Salem News Channel.